We'll go early. I like it. I'm going to call to order the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education. And Mrs. Hines, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Bain? Here. Mr. Beavers? Here. Mrs. Brazel? Here. Mr. Green? Here. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mrs. Evaldi? Here. Mr. Wright? Here. Next item, Pledge of Allegiance. Mrs. Evaldi, would you be so kind? <laughs> 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 to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I missed, I missed something. That's our okay. voice. Mm -hmm. Oh. Minnie Mouse. Yeah. All right, item number four is the approval of the agenda. And Dr. Evers, I think we have one change. One change. Item number three under new business will be an action item roll call. That's it? That's it. I'll entertain a motion to approve the amended agenda. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number five is the approval of the consent agenda, which consists of District 186 regular board meeting minutes dated October the 18th, 2022. Tri-County bills for November of 2022 applications and reports. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Somewhere. Second. Third. All in favor? <laughs> uh, opposed? Motion carries. Next item is the approval of District 186 bills for November of 2022. Are there any questions of Mrs. Bush from the board? Motion to approve the bills. And a second. So, Mrs. Hines. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Green? Yes. Mr. Beavers? Yes. Mrs. Brazel? Yes. Mrs. Evaldi? Yes. Mr. Bain? Yes. Mr. Wright? Yes, motion carries. Item number seven is communications. I understand we have some. We do. So the first one is from Amanda Brown. <coughs> Ms. Finke and Dr. Evers, I received an extremely unexpected job offer today and and it would be unwise for me to decline it. So I am sadly submitting my two week notice. My last day at General John A. Logan would be Friday, November the 4th. I've enjoyed my time at General John A. Logan immensely. The staff and the administration here are kind, supportive and knowledgeable. And the students, it has been so life giving to spend time with them and I will miss them. I can't thank you enough for the opportunity you've given me. This position has provided in a practical way for my daughter and I. Thank you, Amanda Brown. And I'll accept a motion to approve the <coughs> designation. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. The second one is from Katie Hickam to the Murfreesboro CUSD 186 Board of Education. Pursuant to Article 9.5 of our collective bargaining agreement, I am requesting personal leave dating October the 15th, 22, to October the 15th, 23 due to illness. A letter from my physician was attached. I appreciate the continued support of the board and the administration. Sincerely, Katie Dickens. And I'll entertain a motion to approve that leave of absence. <coughs> Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And this one's from Gail Scott. <clears throat> this email is to inform you of my intent to retire from Murfreesboro CUSD 186 at the end of the 25-26 school year. This was a tough decision for me to make. I have thoroughly enjoyed my time at MHS. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll entertain a motion to approve that uh, retirement. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And the last one is from Ashley Renfro. Dear Murfreesboro School Board, thank you for granting my maternity leave request. I delivered a beautiful little girl on the evening of October the 18th, and she's doing wonderful. I'm requesting to extend my maternity leave to the end of the quarter and returning at the start of quarter three, January the 4th, 2023. Between a rough delivery and recovering from a heart procedure a couple of weeks after giving birth, I overextended myself more than I thought and would really appreciate the extra recovery time. I will continue to assist Mrs. Nelson and my students as much as possible in my absence. Thank you for allowing me to work in a great district with great people. Blessings, Ashley Rimpo. And I'll entertain a motion to extend that leave of absence. And second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That's it. We want to wish all of them the best. Item number eight is fishbowl items, and I believe we had a couple. 
I've got one. Uh, hello, Dr. Evers. My name is Jennifer Randolph. I am the Park Natural Resources Coordinator at Giant City State Park. On Friday, November 4th, we hosted a park program for 142nd graders from General Johnny Logan School. I want to tell you how impressed that our volunteers and I were with both the teachers and students. I work with many schools and teachers across our region, and 2022 has been the busiest year that we have seen for educational <coughs> programs. Being the only person on site who organizes <coughs> programs, it's been a rough year, and I have thought that we would no longer be able to accommodate large groups. Friday's program completely energized me and my volunteers and changed my, my mind. The teachers and students were engaged, helpful, and thankful. All of my volunteers made comments about how much fun they had. We were all very impressed with the General Johnny Logan's second grade teachers and students. Thank you very much, Jennifer. And on Saturday, November 5th, SIUC held the annual Expanding Your Horizons Conference. Murfreesboro Middle School had 26 students, one parent, and three teachers. Miss um, Bartnick, Miss May, and Miss Swafford, who attended the conference. Uh, students participated in hands on activities with a math and science focus. Some of the activities were the egg drop, uh, geographic information systems mapping, GIS, origami math, dentistry, gamification, microscopes, coding, and river ecology. Everyone had a nice day, and the majority of the students are already looking forward to attending next year. Excellent. Didn't say who submitted it. But thank you. <laughs> All right, next item is Freedom of Information Act request. It looks like we got one from Smart Procure which I believe they do <coughs> quite often, so two I'm assuming times, that everything is Two or three today. times a year, yes, I gave it to them, I think, the next day. Thank you. Next is a recognition of the audience. The Board of Education welcomes the audience to make public or employee comments. The Board has set aside time in the agenda specifically for this purpose. Pursuant to Board Policy 2.230, each speaker shall be limited to a five-minute presentation. Please be aware that while this is the time for the public to express its opinions and or concerns, the board may or may not comment regarding public presentations. If a matter of public comment warrants discussion or action of the Board of Education, such discussion or action will be added to the agenda of a future meeting. Are there any public comments or concerns? Are there any employee comments or concerns? We will move to new business. Item number one is a resolution to establish the preliminary tax levy which is enclosure number one in your packet. And I'll open the floor to any questions of Mrs. Bush or uh, Dr. Evers from the board. Hearing none, then I'll entertain a motion to approve preliminary <coughs> tax levy. So moved. Second. Second. Mrs. Hines. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mr. Green. Yes. Mrs. Russell. <coughs> Yes. Mr. Bame? Yes. Mrs. Evaldi? Yes. Mr. Beavers? No. Mr. Ruggie? Yes. Motion carries. Item number two, we now need to set the hearing date, time, and place. The recommendation is to, is the hearing will be conducted at 5.45 p.m. on December the 20th, 2022, right before the regularly scheduled board meeting, and I'll entertain a motion to approve that. So moved. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number three is the one that we moved from an informational to an action. It's the internal controls, and I'll turn this over to Dr. Evers. Sure. Um, Ms. Bush and I met yesterday and talked about um, four new internal controls. The first being any incoming mail received at the unit office level that includes a check will be opened by the business manager or her designee and deposited by a separate employee of the business office. A monthly report of such deposits will be provided to the superintendent and the Board of Education. The second would be the superintendent will approve all purchase orders of $250 or more. The third would be the superintendent will re review and approve the schedule of bills along with the business manager monthly. So it will just be an additional signature at the bottom. And then the final would be the business manager the business manager um, reviews and approves each bank, mo <coughs> bank reconciliation monthly. The superintendent will conduct a limited review of <coughs> bank re reconciliations no less than semi-annually. Any questions? Any questions concerns? for the board? So if there's a purchase order that is below $250, you won't see it? Um, assuming that Mr. Carrington can set it at the, an amount, 
I mean, I other, think I can. if you can't set it not, at 250. Not through, I've not dug through all those details of what would be required since it's been set the other way. Yeah, since so, I can remember. so it'll go um, teacher, building principal, me, Miss Bush, because Miss Bush will put in the account codes and, and and Ms. Brown will order the items like in the past. So it'll just be one more step with me. So um, if you can't set, you know, the minimum threshold, I mean, the threshold is 250. If it has to go to zero, then it goes to zero. Okay. okay. I, think <coughs> I think so. Hopefully he can choose uh, at 250 and then the rest goes straight to Jan if they're below 250. So, okay, perfect. Will you advise the board? If that can be established in one year, yeah, of course. Us. I mean, I think you could probably have this accomplished before next month, month's meeting, correct? If that's what you want done, that's please. Work. That'd be great. Yeah, so we'll have we'll have to get it moving hopefully after Thanksgiving before the twenty fourth meeting. Any other questions Are on there the questions? internal controls? Yeah, just live in it for a couple of months and see, you know, how how the flow goes and just. You know, let us know. I mean, right. I, mean, I worked in the 23rd largest school system for a while, and, and they still, all the special ed had to go through that level. Um, then, it, it, even though Carol was rather small, we had a lot of Title I money because of the poverty being so high. Mm -hmm. So, I typically saw about four to six million dollars go through annually of purchase orders just because of the, um, the, the level of funding that came from state and federal funds. So, um, I, I'm comfortable, and, and as a special ed director, I, I saw, you know, all purchase related to special ed in the district that was commensurate in size to Murfreesboro, so I think I can. And if it, if it becomes too cumbersome and we need to have a discussion about resi revising to 500, then I'll let you know. I know that when the board provided feedback, the numbers were um, between 250 and 1,000, so we'll look at 250, and if, it's, if it becomes too cumbersome, or, or if these these four critics right here say you're slowing things down then that will be <laughs> a it's, problem it's probably not too bad most of the year it's when we get to the spring the spring order time right and these guys are approving just hundreds and hundreds of right I used to get small yeah. ones you know I like that it's electronic I used to have to yeah. get file folders that were about half inch to an inch daily so yes it's, that's much nicer it is so it's electronic we'll get it pushed through and then I'm certain that if it doesn't get quickly moved on and they'll come to me and say, hey, that was over 250. What's the problem? What's hold up? So now, Miss Brown, you know it's me. If it's over 250, <laughs> I'm the problem, okay? <laughs> See, um, I heard what you said. Did you mention credit card statements? Credit card statements, oh, and I should put that in there as an inc yeah. internal control. We're already doing that. We're right? doing yeah. that, but um, credit card statements will be yeah. um, reviewed monthly. So really, you're capturing anything over $250, and a number of small purchases are probably going on the credit card anyway. And so yep. you'll see the credit card, you'll see the vendor, you'll see it. the dollar yep. amount. So you'll be capturing probably, and this is a wild guess, a good 70 plus percent of all expenditures. And most of those... I was estimating about 80, but... Yeah, yeah, I mean, sure. <laughs> yeah the majority of the credit card expenditures are POs anyway. So, yep. so if they're... You know, I mean, the, the, the Amex is for the three of us are, are probably a good almost one to two inches a month. Yeah, and until we get into the spring, and then they're yeah. two or three. Yeah. But yeah, so that so that will capture a really large amount of those purchases or review. And then, as far as putting an employee on payroll, what, what control do we have on that? I know the board has to approve, <coughs> but um, so they get hired, and then they have to fill out their employment paperwork, and the, and t so Terry and Melinda do that and then the general information sheet that we do every year to, that's given to all employees the there's also a check there that goes to the employee to see is that amount that I'm supposed to be making you know according to the salary schedule uh, building principals sign off on that then that comes back to us and you know each year so we kind of have a check on that each year and then I will also spot check those and in negotiations year I'm looking at every single one every single salary so um, see payroll in any way, shape, or form? I don't think so. Okay. I'm, I'm just asking. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm trying to run the, the play in my brain. And, you know, board approves. I think maybe seeing a payroll listing every once in a while would be... Once a quarter? Semi-annually? Yeah. Or three times? On a spot basis. Whatever you want. I do think that that's probably... Because, I mean, only once every once in a while do we have like anyone and it's usually at the beginning of the year so probably 
like August, <coughs> December, and May. Get the payroll. Or surprise them. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we run three <laughs> times anyway. So, um, yeah, <coughs> absolutely. Okay. You just tell us what you want and we'll bring them to you. And the admins see their building payroll, right? Okay. You guys sign. You guys all sign off on those. We just do time. Really For the non-certified time sheets and then so, any subs and then any certified um, extra duty and so they also approve any overtime the building principals or um, for cooks it would be georgia for custodians and maintenance it would be darren that approves that overtime directly and then it comes here because i mean i have no idea when and what right. they're doing as far as overtime so that gets we also sign there. off on the general information sheets at the start of the year with our salaries yeah. too yeah. okay okay what about expense reports mileage extra expenses who, who approves those? Those, those don't go through the building admins, but mm -hmm. there, okay. there are very few of those. You know, the itinerant. We have a couple itinerant teachers, a special ed teacher that travels between buildings, nurses. So mm -hmm. there aren't really a lot of those, um, but that's something that we could do a, a second review on too. As far as it's um, just something I know that we really cracked. I mean, those are heavily reviewed because they're just a, a source of. There aren't oh, a I'll lot. Just, I'll just fudge the miles a little yeah. bit. Or, there aren't a know. lot of, very yeah. few. I mean, we've gotten it down to with the district vehicles. There aren't a lot of, isn't a lot of that That's travel true. back and forth. And any professional trip. And maybe vehicles. not regularly, just just when they do pop up, making sure that one or two different sets of eyes look at them. Well, and those are things that the, the travel expenses on a monthly basis, quarterly basis, whenever they turn them in, we see those on the schedule of bills, so I see that. Dr. Evers will see that now. You see those. Mm -hmm. So if right. you know, those big numbers jump out, say, well, mm -hmm. why, you know, what, you know, what is this? That's so. a good point, Jan. It really is, because we do see the list of expenditures. Right, and they'll say travel. I so I, I agree with Troy. I think run it, run the play for a few months, see how it goes, yeah. see if it's a doable system. <coughs> but I think it's an improvement over what we had, uh, just because we have such a small accounting staff. Mm -hmm. It's going to involve basically all hands at the administrative level to make sure that you know our taxpayer dollars are at least accounted for. I mean, I, I'm I am not alleging any problems because no, it's absolutely not. not. No, but no, no. I'm trying to protect all of the respective individuals too right. by saying, oh well, at least two sets of eyes looked over everything. Exactly. Exactly. Have the policy moving forward because you yeah. don't always they're not always going to have these same people in those spots, okay. and you got something yeah. set for years from now. Yeah. I'm all for transparency and. Yeah. I just open, open them up. Yeah, and I don't know if there's some way to default to, and Terry, you could, I know on the forms it doesn't, I approve transportation, claim, I think request, let, I'm the final person who does the transportation claims. If there is not, and I think, um, I know in the work orders, if I think maybe we need to have an area where, if it's very rarely that, maybe only a couple times annually where we don't have a vehicle where, Right. It would where you would have to send it back so that it would come back to me that says no available bill vehicle. So I know that if they're dri driving to, um, you know, Massac County Champagne. or Springfield, that we're going to have you know between a ninety dollar or a, a, if you go to Springfield more like a two hundred dollar claim. And so I mean I think that there if we could come up with something on the form, Steve, that it kicks back that if the uh, if a vehicle is not available, like no vehicle available that. Terry, because she's the assigner. Um, if there's a on the conference forms, on I'm the transportation, the transportation that would be with students. So the conference form, the conference forms. Yeah, where they where they use a vehicle to go to the conference. Right. You know, because usually as soon as I get the request, I look on the calendar. So if there's not one available, I don't know if there's a check box that could be added, like not you know. available, so that it goes no. back. And there's always a chance one will get canceled. And then we can go back and redistribute. Like a couple of weeks ago, I had a big conflict with vehicles, but I ended up getting one canceled. So Mr. Carrington was able to take it to his conference, and it worked out. But right. sometimes in that busy time, if we could come up with way, no vehicle available, like for that rare instance, it doesn't happen more than a few times annually, but it would give us. Um, and then um, the only other scenario that I could think of is. You know, Steve has his own, and Georgia has one that she utilizes. But if those become like, if yours become in a state of disrepair, that you have to be back on a mileage sheet. You know, some some mechanism so that we know and that I can be like, oh yeah, that was that we were aware of it. That you know, a week or two of 
Because sometimes they go into the shop. Sometimes it's just sure. a day, and sometimes it's two weeks, and so, you know. So we're just approving the this, ver the... The six, the six are the incoming mail um, and any uh, <coughs> received at the unit office that includes a check will be opened by the business manager or designee <coughs> and deposited by a separate employee of the business office. A monthly report of such deposits will be provided to the superintendent and the board of education. The superintendent will approve all purchase orders of $250 or more. The superintendent will approve, review and approve the schedule of bills monthly alongside the business manager. The business manager reviews and approves each bank reconciliation monthly. The superintendent will conduct a limited review of bank reconciliations no less than semi-annually. Credit card, card statements will be reviewed monthly by the business manager and the superintendent. Payroll, payroll reports will be generated a minimum of three times annually at the discretion of the superintendent. Got them all? So you're just going to type it up as a standard operating procedure? Um, we'll just put it in policy so once it's approved and act, uh, voted on tonight, then Terry will add it as board policy. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Then I'll entertain a motion to approve the internal controls as presented. So moved. Second? Second. Mrs. Hines. Mr. Bain. Yes. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mr. Bain. Yes. Mrs. Evaldi. Yes. Mr. Beavers. Yes. Mrs. Brazel. Yes. Mr. Brown. Yes. Motion carries. Last item is the approval of the ISBE school <coughs> maintenance project grant. This is a matching grant of $25,000. Our part of it will come from the county facility sales tax, and this is for furthering the vinyl wall coverings, window coverings. Yeah. Any questions from the board? Do we? Did we get all of the last ones? In no, right now we have McElvain's exterior, we have Carruthers exterior. Um, the interior vinyl did not provide the safety or protection, so we'll have to do some type of uh, different product. So the scope of the original project, project has had to be scaled back. The lighting provided visibility of the people inside the offices, so it didn't provide what we needed on the inside. So the exterior vinyling will be completed at the middle school probably within, I would guess, um, 10 days. It's pretty close on the, if you've seen the front of, um, of the middle school, you really can't, most of the time you cannot see anyone. Occasionally when the sun and, or the shadows hit it just right, you can see, it would be hard to see a silhouette and make any type of accurate, you know, identification <clears throat> of where people are. I, we've had people, Mr. Um, um, her and I were standing in the foyer with two other people and we opened the door and a mom's like, oh, I had no idea anyone was in here. And she was really pretty like, startled because it was like a foyer full of people. And so that's ex that's truly exactly what you want. You don't yeah. want anyone to know if there's so one person or 15. So we will have, um, the high school is, was all inter te internal like mm -hmm. vinyling, so it will not be done. We're, we have to come up with something else. And then... Um, the general, um, have you done any finalized graphics? We've been waiting on proofs forever. So we've uh, gotten nothing, and Darren has gone back and forth, and so, so have I. So we're just waiting. So if you want to see the finalized, we have um, it at the bus entrance and here at the front door, and then um, yours is fully installed exterior film, and then the, the middle school, I wanted one, one final run of. Uh, what they're gonna have on all the doors. So we may not get the full 25, it just depends on what we end up spending on right. the project it overall. Was a match. Yeah. It so if it ends so up being 14,000, yeah. there'll be a 14,000 local match, so. Oh, perfect. Okay. Other questions? I'll entertain a motion to approve the school maintenance project grant. Second? Second. Second. Mrs. Hines. Mr. Beavers? Yes. Yeah. Mrs. Ivaldi? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Bain? Yes. Mrs. Brazel? Yes. Mr. Bain? Yes. Mr. Remy? Yes. Motion carries. We have a need to go into closed session. Briefly. Um, I'm going to ask Mr. Hernan because he needs to get to a basketball game to say very briefly. And then. Okay. Okay. And then you can move. In the hot seat, buddy. Make a motion to go into closed session pursuant <clears throat> to Section 2 of the Open Meetings Act 5, Illinois Compiled Statutes 120 slash 2C to review the appointment, employment, compensation, <laughs> discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees in the district, including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee to determine its validity. Second. 
Mrs. Hines. Mr. Beavers. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mrs. Evaldi. Yes. Mr. Bain. Yes. Mrs. Brazel. Yes. Mr. Green. Yes. Mr. Yes. Motion carried.